This came out fire. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, good people. My name is Otis James Bush Jr. This is OJ Cook. Cajun pasta or Creole pasta if you're from my neck of the woods. Similar flavors, different people, but we're not doing history lesson today. Today I had a taste for this viral sensation, so I figured I'd hook some up, put my own stamp on it. Louisiana is home to some of the most unique flavors and some of the most flavorful dishes in the world. This dish encompasses all of those elements, all made within a one pan simple pasta. Les et bon temps roulé. So what we gonna need? We use a shrimp today, so got some shrimp, of course. Fill me. Got heavy cream, assorted peppers. We use a rigatoni pasta today. I bought some high protein chickpea pasta, you know what I'm saying? That's just meat. Use whatever kind of pasta you like. Got an onion, some garlic, some fire roasted tomato chunks that I may or may not use, and some tomato paste. I see how I feel. And then we also got some Parmesan cheese and assorted seasonings, which we'll get into in the video. And that's it, man. We're going to take all of this, hook it on up. Come on with me. All right, good people. Welcome back. Welcome back. First thing we'll do is a little prep work. We got assorted colored uh, bell peppers here. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know, these actually, you know, do have different flavors. So it not only serves as a, a dazzle of color, but it's functional as well. I will say that once we coated everything with sauce, you really couldn't tell, but you know, it still tasted good, you feel me? And we just gonna chop up, uh, I'm probably using about a fourth of a cup of each one of these peppers. Uh, so I, you know, I only chopped up probably about a fourth of each one. Uh, you know, made quick work of that, no problems. And then we got ourselves a purple onion. I'm gonna use a half an onion or really a half a cup of chopped onions uh, here in a minute. Uh, just if you're looking for some sort of a measurement or a baseline. And you just wanna chop that into, you know, little chunks like this. I forget what the, the technical term is. Now here we got our shrimp. Uh, peeled D-Vein washed, and I pulled the tail off of most of them. Left the tail on a few because it adds flavor to the dish. And then we'll coat these generously with some olive oil and then some tonic saturated sauce. I also went ahead and added some cayenne pepper. As you can see, I'm shaking the last bit. Gotta go buy some more. And then we got some smoked paprika I'm throwing into this. I use regular paprika in the uh, mix for the, the sauce here in a minute. We'll talk about that in a second. And then I threw in uh, some chipotle powder as well. That's not traditional, you know, for this dish, but add something to it, man. I'm trying to tell y'all. Okay, we got uh, some olive oil into a medium high pan, and we're going to throw our shrimp down, you know, make sure we make a nice even layer. And, you know, these will cook pretty quickly. I gave these a nice sear because it adds some flavor to the shrimp. So my heat was, you know, more, more on the, the high side of medium, medium high. And then I'm flipping these, you know, just over, you know, one at a time because I'm OCD like that. Um, just to make sure that they all get a, the appropriate amount of, of, of simmer and char. You know, shrimp don't take, you know, a couple of minutes to cook. All right. And then we're going to add a half a cup of our onion. Um, in this dish, I was going to throw some sausage, but I, I elected to toss them to the side. I didn't like the way the, the sausage that I bought tastes. So, but the dish came out great. Don't worry about all that. You know what I'm saying? Then we're going to throw a fourth of a cup of each pepper in and we're going to saute these until it becomes fragrant and translucent and you start to see uh, the peppers and onions release the, the juices and what have you. Yeah, 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 just like that, just like that. And then once, you know, it starts to simmer like so, and you start to get your translucent, you know, and then you want to add your minced garlic now. I forgot to film the minting and the, and the crushing and the minting of the garlic, but you've seen me do this before, so no worries, I'm sure you can get through that, no problem. And then you just want to Go ahead and mix that in you know, until everything starts to become fragrant. You know what I mean? Letting all those aromatics loose, you dig? And then we got some tomato paste. I use about a tablespoon of that. And this wasn't in the ingredients list, but I had it. A little bit of lemon juice, you know what I'm saying? A little, little, little trade secret. Don't tell nobody, you feel me? Throw that in there as well. I think it adds a little something to it. And then you want to go ahead and mix this up until your tomato paste is, you know, uh, mixed throughout your vegetables. And now we got our season. Now we got, uh, garlic powder, white pepper, black pepper, we got uh, chipotle powder, uh, cayenne pepper, and paprika. Uh, not smoked paprika, just regular paprika, you feel me? I have all the measurements down in the description box for you, and you just want to mix this in, you know. At this point, your dish is starting to come together, man. At this point, you really, you really cook it now. Yeah. You gonna add our heavy cream in. I'm gonna add a cup and a half to start off with, and you'll see me add a little bit more later on as you know, I'm kind of going back and forth between things, trying to get the, the, the ratio right. You know, this is all off the cuff. I really just, I knew what the dish consisted of, 
and I feel like I could put it together, you know what I'm saying? So that's why, that's why a lot of this sounds freestyled. And then you just want to go ahead and mix this in, you know, generously. Now you can't forget the salt. I didn't add the salt into my, my seasoning mixture because I like to add it independently just in case I don't want to over salt, you know what I'm saying? So I think if you wanted to look for a measurement, I probably had about half of a teaspoon of salt. But you know, you want to just taste it and make sure it's to your liking, you know. You may not be a big salt fan. You may, you know, be watching your salt intake. I don't know. We will add eight ounces of our uh, cheek pea pasta to some boiling salted water here. And then you just want to cook those per the instructions on whatever kind of pasta you decide to use, of course. Okay, so you add it's a little bit more heavy cream. I was tending to my pasta, you know what I'm saying? My, my sauce started to bubble, you know what I'm saying? So I went ahead and just added a little bit to loosen it back up. Here we have some Parmesan cheese. If you're looking for a measurement on it, I said probably about anywhere from a half or to three fourths of a, to a, of a cup. And uh, this adds flavor and also thickens up the, the, the sauce. Now, if you don't like Parmesan cheese, you could totally make this without the cheese. You know, addition to it, it's, it's already dairy heavy though. But if you don't like, you know, Parmesan, you don't have to make it with Parmesan. You could, you know, just let the, the, the sauce thicken up, you know, a bit, and uh, it will come out very similar. Um, not as thick, but thick enough, you know what I'm saying, to where it will be a nice sauce for you. Alright, we're gonna add our shrimp back to the mixture. Coat those with this amazing sauce that we have concocted. Yeah, 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 just like that. And then we're gonna add all our pasta back in. Now, I didn't add it all at first. Um, in fact, I, I don't think I used all of it in the end. Uh, Cause you know, as I always say, any dish is about the ratio. So we need to keep a good sauce to pasta to shrimp ratio, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very, very important watch that so anytime you add an additional ingredient add a little bit at a time you know mix it up and then see what you add you know so add a little fresh pasta and now we in the game boy it's time to plate this thing up you feel me one dime two times three times right. add a little bit more you know we moved our shrimp around to make it pretty and we're gonna add a little fresh pasta of course for your hair top and now we in the game, baby. Yeah, look how beautiful that is, boy. Tell me, that don't look like that should be in a restaurante. You know what I'm saying? It's your, it's your, it's your, it's your favorite uh, Italian uh, Cajun themed eatery. You know what I'm saying? Or like, should be on the cover of a magazine or something. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, as always, I know you want a bite. I know you want a bite. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And you can get you one, man. You just follow this recipe, hook it up at the crib. You'll be eating in no time. Peace. All right, good people. Moment of truth. Time to test it out. See what it do. Oh yeah. So yeah, man. Cajun shrimp pasta. I decided not to add the sausage at the last minute because I ain't really care for the way that sausage tasted. So I decided to just go ahead and discard that. And I'm really glad I did because this came out fire. Literally, it did come out a little spicy. I went a little heavy on the cayenne, but you know me, Louisiana pepper boy, you feel me? So if you had the crib, just cut that back a little bit, you should be fine. Everything else came out great. The chickpea pasta is actually surprisingly good. It's low carb and high in protein. We're gonna do one more bite for the 